Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Over the last few years I have reviewed a number of brands debut efforts, their very first watches and let me assure you it's really hard to get it right first time. However, some brands do manage to nail it and come out with totally awesome maiden models. Now the watch on my wrist today and on my bench for review today is the first watch launched by a new brand called Nordic Marine Instruments. So did they get it right first time? Well, yes, and also no. This is the first watch launch, but it's not their first attempt at a launch. They tried to get a more expensive model off the ground late last year, but it didn't quite happen. So they went back to the drawing board, changed the design, changed the price point, and are launching on Kickstarter next week with this new model. And you know what? They did the right thing. This is actually really good. And I'm not just saying that because... This video is sponsored by Nordic Marine Instruments. I'm saying it because it's true. I will of course therefore leave a link to the campaign in the description of the video. The early bird prices on these are fantastic. So as always, if you like what you see, make sure you get in early. Is it perfect? Of course not. So I'm gonna flip it around today. I'm gonna to do something a bit different. I'm gonna start with the negatives, but honestly, there are not all that many of them. Let's get on with it. Okay, let's flip this around today. Let's start with the negatives before moving on to the positives. I call this the Helm Review because Helm watches are so damn good there are far more positives than negatives. So if you're okay with a few negatives, then you're okay with the watch. And let's start with the name, Nordic Marine Instruments. Now it's actually a man called Mike Jurgensen who is the man behind the brand, along with one other name that I will reveal shortly. Mike has Nordic ancestry, which I'm sure he's understandably very proud of, hence Nordic Marine Instruments, and the model name Oostersund. Perhaps you can tell by my pronunciation, I do not have Nordic ancestry. It's a bit of a gobful though, isn't it? And they have now rather narrowed their own field of vision to dive watches. I wonder whether we'll see this become NMI at some point in the future when the brand realizes that it's 19th dive watch is perhaps one or two too many. So branding, not the worst I've seen, but also not the best I've seen. And I'm sure you've already spotted, they sent me the green prototype. It's quite a deep, dark forest green. It doesn't exactly pop, it's not an in your face color. And if you have a look at the Kickstarter campaign, the other colors available aren't in your face either. I appreciate not everyone wants bright, vibrant colors, but these four are a bit limited and there isn't a black. I just cannot imagine launching a new watch brand and not offering a black color variant. For me, the pastel blue and the silvery white are the picks of the bunch therefore, but I bet more color range would not have gone amiss. And my only other complaint involves the price. There are 100 of each of these four color variants available for 399 USD on early bird. I am not complaining about that. I think that's a great price. I suspect you'll agree once you see the quality on offer here today. But if you miss those early birds, obviously the deal gets less and less attractive. Now, they are claiming an RRP of 599 on these going forward. That is a huge jump of 50% on the early birds. I'm never convinced that's the best strategy. It does encourage initial sales, but it makes sales further down the line somewhat troublesome. But that's it. If you're okay with the branding and you're okay with one of those four colors and you can snag one at 399, this is really very impressive. The standard of case finishing and bracelet finishing is exceptional for the money. It ticks all the right boxes in terms of specifications with a no date specific high beat Miota on the fly adjustable clasp and some fantastic detailing on the dial itself with multifaceted indices and hands that would not look out of place on a watch costing a grand and not $400. I said there was one other person involved in the company. That person is Travis Tan from RZE. He's gonna be responsible for quality control, delivery, and logistics. Travis is an experienced industry player, so you're not really taking a risk on a startup with somebody like him on board. Let's cover the basics then. Let's cover dimensions and specifications. They have very sensibly gone for a very sensible set of dimensions with their first offering. It's a classic 4020. So 40 mil in diameter with 20 mil lug width. The bracelet tapers all the way down to 16 and back up to 18 at the clasp, by the way. Thickness is 12 mil on the nose, thanks to a slim movement. And the lug to lug is a nice and wearable 48 mil. 
Crystal is flat sapphire with AR undercoating, and sized up for me, weight is 154 grams, absolutely spot on for this size of watch. 200 meters of water resistance is just what you'd expect as well, and as noted, it's powered by a Miyota 90S5. No display case back though, as you can see, but you do get this nice, simple brushed one. It looks like they're going to individually number these as well, which is always a bit of a bonus. Now, the 90S5 is actually an open heart version of the 9000 series. I guess the decision is based purely on supply then. It's essentially the same as the 9039, so 24 joules, 42 hour power reserve, and tolerances from the factory of minus 10 to plus 30 seconds per day. Right, let's have a look at the case finish. This reminds me a lot of the Islander North port that I looked at last month, which in turn was very reminiscent of a Seiko case. It's kind of somewhere in between a 62 MAS and a 44 GS, if you forgive the references. The finish is fantastic though. It goes polish, brush, polish, brush from bottom to top, and then polish, brush again for the bezel and bezel insert. All transitions are crisp, and there is an additional high polish chamfer where the bracelet meets the lugs, bringing the whole thing together. The crown guards are elegant and the 6mm crown is still easy to grip. It has the brand logo on it with the anchor and it looks oil pressed rather than etched which again is another nice touch. If we go in even closer you can see just how good the finish is. No complaints about this whatsoever, it's excellent. The bezel is 120 click, unidirectional as you would expect. The action is okay if not outstanding. It's slightly light and this prototype is maybe a quarter of a click out of alignment. I'm sure they'll resolve that for production units though. The bracelet is also nicely finished. It's a three link oyster style with female end links, quite thin screws holding it all together. Now this prototype is not quick release, but my cheat sheet said that production units will be quick release. When I took this one out of the box and I saw the clasp, I thought, aha, they've dropped the ball there. And then I realized they hadn't. It's just one of the neatest internally adjusting clasps that I've come across to this point. This is one of the best trends of the last five years, the slow creep of these clasps into the affordable end of the market. This one offers about a centimeter of adjustment, standard ratcheting style. It's a pressed upper, mill scissor, good size double security pushers, and the brand name and logo etched portrait style in the center. The Oyster, it's a bit of a safe choice, but everything here has been very well done. Dial and hands, we've already had a look, but let's have another quick look before I get this one on wrist. The molded wave pattern dial has an outer recess with printed minute markers. All text is, I believe, part of the molding process. Plus, there is the addition of an applied brand logo. Again, it's that anchor slash shield combo underneath the index at 12. Now, all indices are applied. They double taper from back to front, so they flatten and they get narrower. And they feature a flat loomed upper surface and high polished edges to catch the light. This is one of the nicest handsets I've seen on anything at this price point. Multifaceted tapering with brushed upper surfaces and high polished edges and flat tips at either end. They're well proportioned and also well loomed as you'll see in just a second. And it's a bespoke second hand with loomed arrowhead and a slender red tip to it and a custom anchor counterbalance at the other end. It's the same anchor that features on the logo. The brushed bezel insert is very simple, just paint filled batons on the hours and the minutes from 1 to 15 and a very well integrated loom pip in a black triangle. Overall it's a sophisticated and expensive looking bezel dial and handset and it helps make the watch itself look sophisticated and expensive. Now loom, I have spoken about it but I haven't shown you it as yet. BGW9 on the hands and the indices and the pip in the triangle. It looks okay initially, but if I turn the speed up on this one, by the end of my test, it doesn't quite look so okay. Now this is a prototype and they usually get a bit of a buy on the loom. I would like to think they'll improve this for production units as well. On wrist, there are no surprises, no sharp edges. 12 mil is nice and slim and 48 mil is perfectly manageable for most people. And there is a bit of downturn from the lugs on this style of case as well. There's plenty of light play from the polished edges of the case and the bracelet clasp, but there's not so much polish that the watch is gonna look like trash after six months of wear. And if I was being really picky, let's be honest, I usually am, so why stop now? I would love to see half links included in this package as well. The idea of these adjustable clasps is to start out the day with the clasp in the middle of its range. And with only a centimeter of adjustment available, you really need half links in order to do this. Perhaps that's something they can think about for production units as well. 
It's an attractive wrist roll though, as I said, sophisticated and expensive. And legibility is great, at least on this version, thanks to those multifaceted silver hands against a dark colored dial. I have, however, already declared my personal preference for the lighter colored dials, so they probably won't be quite as legible. And a couple of pocket shots before we finish today, the first loose below the knuckle, and the second after I took an additional link out higher and tighter above the knuckle. Like I said, no sharp edges, you can wear this one exactly how you see fit. So there we go, I've already done the complaints, I've already done the niggles. The branding is a little bit clumsy and potentially a bit limiting, as are the four dial colours, and this one looks a whole lot better today at 399 than it will look in six months time at 599 of course. But this is undoubtedly one of the best manufactured maiden efforts that I've looked at in the last couple of years. The case and overall standard of finishing is great. The clasp is so neat and tidy, and the handset far more complex than you would normally see for this price. There's an obvious comparison between this one and the Islander Northport, which itself was a really strong offering at 425 USD. This one beats it on price, on design, and on manufacturing, I believe. But of course, you will have to wait a couple of months for delivery if you opt for one of these, whereas the Northport you can buy today. So there you have it. What do you think of this one? Branding aside, that is a good looking and well made watch for 399, assuming you can catch that particular worm. 599 RRP, obviously an entirely different equation though, and it will be interesting to see what they do with the branding in the future, if they find enough people who are keen to have a Nordic Marine instrument on their wrist. But good job redesigning and repositioning, it's definitely one of the strongest debut efforts I've seen in a while. If you want to see two of the others, click here or click here. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. I hope to see you again in the next video.